Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. So many of you have been asking for this tutorial for this journal here. And finally, here it is. So we are using cheesecloth, just like that. And we are creating this beautiful textured cover. We will be doing everything step by step. We'll create this journal over here and everything is done on video. So all of the steps. For this tutorial, I didn't write the step-by-step -step directions like I usually do, but I did have captions throughout the video listing the steps in order. And the reason why I've done it that way is because it's very, uh, very straightforward. To do this is actually very straightforward, so it doesn't need extensive instructions. It's really, really easy. Anyone can do it. And I always say that in my videos because I believe that anyone can do it. Let's just get started, shall we? The first thing you need to do, obviously, is choose a cover that you're going to work with. I am using this cover and I need to sand it down. So you can see here in the reflection, this cover has a plasticky finish. It's very smooth plasticky finish. And in order to make sure that my cheesecloth sticks, I'm going to sand it down. So any cover that has that type of a smooth plasticky kind of feel, I'll, I would give it a little bit of a sand. A cover like this, this is completely fabric. I wouldn't sand this. I would just go ahead and glue right over the top. I don't need to completely remove the shine, but you know, I want to get a lot of it off. So I'm just using some type of a sandpaper it doesn't really really matter you use what you've got uh, it can be a fine one i mean it'll be better if, if it's got some grit to it so you can see the sanding paper paper that i have i don't know if that's a, an actual grading of paper i'm not sure but you can see it's very gritty and it's leaving scratches which is fine that is fine and then i have the sanding block which isn't as strong and you can see this one is not leaving any scratches but it is taking away the, that shine a little bit so whatever you have will be fine i might just quickly do the sides and there we go as you can see there's still some shine but when i run my hand across the cover it feels rough and that's what you want you want the majority of the surface to have been sanded down you can just go over it once or twice that will be enough just before we continue i want to show you that i have already de-gutted the book i've taken out the inside and usually i would leave this page to make it into some sort of a pocket like this on the journal but because i will need to glue a little bit of this cheesecloth on it on the inside i need to remove all of the pages so i can't have anything there all right so i have a nice flat surface here i have no pages in there and you can see the size of the cheesecloth it is bigger than my book because i want some of it to go on the inside as well okay the next thing we need is a glue solution so i i will show you in a moment but I use this solution if you can see it's quite runny so you can see I'm trying to demonstrate that you know it's quite runny so it's actually much easier to spread the glue around when it's runny and especially with cheesecloth you don't want a glue that you have to drag around too much because then it will move everything uh, too much and create large holes in the cheesecloth and so on so this solution is PVA glue mixed with water and I'm just going to show you this because people always ask me about this. See here, PVA glue. It's a type of glue. It can be any brand, but it will usually say PVA glue on the bottle. And it's just a white glue, like a school glue. And then I put about two thirds of it into a container like this. And then I add water. So two thirds of glue and one third of water. This is approximately, I kind of go by feel and by eye so that's why i was showing you uh, here how it's dripping and before i begin i'm going to protect my surface and i'm using a cereal box liner so it would be good to use plastic like this cereal box liners are perfect for this because it's very easy to peel the cheesecloth off of this whereas if you if you use paper underneath 
the cheesecloth will get stuck to the paper so you would have to be careful not to get any glue past the borders of the book if that makes sense and now you've worked it out what we need to do next is glue the cheesecloth to the cover so let me see if I can have this in frame so you can see I'm just going to apply some glue on the whole section here just go over my cover just the spine and and this front cover here and put my cheesecloth down and now I'm going to add more glue over the top and you will see see this now you can see a little bit better how it's you don't need to do that but I'm just showing you how runny the glue is and now I just gently apply this glue over the whole cover like this I might actually start by doing this this cheesecloth is not you know the best quality cheesecloth so I have to be careful with it otherwise it's going to start to tear too much and now I'm just applying the glue all over like this with a gentle hand kind of like you would if you were decoupaging napkins and as soon as that cheesecloth is down then it doesn't uh, move around as much and you can apply a little bit of pressure I have to pay a particular attention to the creases here so I want to make sure that my cheesecloth is glued into the creases into that valley of the of the cover right then I'm going to do the spine and I'm going to do this valley here I might need to go in from from here and apply glue in there because I didn't put any glue in there and then go back to it and that's okay you know when something like this happens it's fine you can remedy it you just put it back down go over it again it's no big deal now I have to do this side and I will apply glue lifting it up again there we go and now I'm going to work in this crease properly I might just kind of tap this into place move it around a bit how I like it and then add a bit more glue on top I'm not being stingy with glue either I really want to make sure that this is glued down really well so you want to make sure that there's no lifting see this area here and see this area here see how the cheesecloth is, is not sitting flush inside that fold we don't want that we want that cheesecloth to be really snug everywhere so this one you know it's just a matter of maneuvering things around a little bit I use my bone folder to push it down as much as I can and then sometimes what will happen is when you push this side down then this side will come up and then if that's happening if you push here and then this side is lifting up then you you need to get some more cheesecloth kind of from here then you push it down you know if the, if that happens that's why it's better to do it in two parts you do this section first and then you add glue here so that that doesn't happen I think that's looking okay I just want to it feels like it's dry over here and now I need to leave this to dry and then we will do the next section I just wanted to say because I just thought of it now you can after the sanding if you have gesso you can apply gesso onto your cover first and then apply this you can skip gesso altogether or you can add a little bit of gesso after this is dry which is what I think I'm going to do in this tutorial but you don't have to use gesso at all here we go gesso medium that prepares your work for paint and such right so I guess it would also might help this cheesecloth to glue better onto this shiny surface I'm not entirely sure I'm not an expert on these things but in the past what I have done is I applied a little bit of gesso on top of my cheesecloth once it's dried okay so now I'm going to leave this to dry and then I'll come back and I'll show you how to wrap this around just getting rid of any excess glue okay I'll be back okay so that's all nice and dry and now you'll see what I mean about the plastic see how it's stuck here and I can just easily peel it off let's have a closer look I'm not sure if you can see but see how this cheesecloth is going into those grooves so that that's what I want okay so now we turn it over and I'm just going to trim the excess 
off the cheesecloth. Okay, here we go. So I've left enough around so that I can wrap it around. Now, this is pretty glued down really well. You can see here. If I really tried to tug on it, I'm, I am kind of tugging. It's not coming up, you see. But let's say uh, this was lifting really easy. That's why it's important to wrap it all the way around like this. So then you don't have any chance of the cheesecloth ungluing from the book. So I get my glue out again and may maybe I'll start off here on this side. So I'll just apply glue there. So I'm also applying glue on the outside edge of my book cover, just like that. And I'm starting with the corners. I'm going to fold those corners in. And then fold this side in. So I want this edge here to be nice and tight and I'm kind of pushing that cheesecloth in and I might do the same for this side now. Fold those corners in. And now the same here. And also in the cover, there's this groove here. Sometimes this groove is quite deep and quite large. So I just play around with it and really make sure that my cheesecloth is flush on the inside, kind of like what we did here in those grooves. You can see over here that cheesecloth is sticking up. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glue to kind of uh, get that to, you know, stay down doesn't have to be perfect because this will be covered anyway okay and there we go so everything's looking nice and neat and I'm going to let this dry and come back and then we'll go on to the next step okay that's all nice and dry so we will come back to the inside cover a little bit later now let's go back to the outside cover so for the next step if you want to create this effect like these flowers here or this here you will need modeling paste now this is quite inexpensive this one was $11 Australian if you don't have it you can make your own there's lots of DIY videos on YouTube you just search DIY modeling paste or DIY texture paste and you can make your own very cheaply using baby powder if you wish you can skip that step altogether and have your cover just look like this with nothing at the front or maybe just a book plate at the front but none of this sort of stuff but if you want to create this that's what we're going to do next so like i said you need your modeling paste something to apply it with and you need a stencil i'm going to use this one and that's the same one that i used in this journal so i'm just going to stick with that one and now i'm just going to position my stencil and just to let you know as well i have decided to completely skip over the gessoing part i'm not going to add any gesso on this cover if i was to add gesso i would do it before doing the modeling paste but i'm just going straight to modeling paste i have to make sure that i'm keeping my stencil in place i don't want it to move around so i have to be quite careful here so i'm just going to go very slowly Another option is also to paint your cover first and then add modeling paste and you can mix some acrylic colors, acrylic paint with the modeling paste and that way you have a colored modeling paste. And now I'm just going over everything to make sure that all the spots are filled in and I want everything to be nice and level. Okay, and here we go. Moment of truth. I have to lift this up very carefully there we go i'm going to leave this to dry and then once it's dry we will continue on to the next step i'm going to get any excess modeling paste off of this and put it back in my jar and then i'm going to simply wash this stencil with some water don't want to waste anything okay now that that's all dry our next step is painting so i am going to use two colors brown and gold the brown one will be my base and then the gold one I'm just going to play around and add accents over the top. You can choose any two colors or three color combinations, it's up to you. So just play around but I'm going with gold and brown. So now what I need to do is uh, I'm going to apply my base color which is the brown and just paint right over the top of everything. 
So I suspect because I didn't add gesso, this purple color will be coming through a little bit through the paint. It's okay. I mean, I can, I'll see how it looks. I might like the combination of a little bit of purple peeking through and and then some gold on top. We'll see. If I don't like it, I'm just going to add a second coat of my brown color. It's probably more pink than purple, but you know what I mean. Okay, so I've painted right over the top of everything and I just want to make sure that I'm, I pick up any excess paint around this raised image that I have here because it will interfere with the, the edges of the design. Making sure I don't have any excess paint in the grooves of the book. Okay, here we go. So you might be able to see some of that pink peeking through. I'm not sure that I actually mind it, so I think I might leave it. I have painted the sides as well of the book, and I also wanted to mention, like I said before, you can paint the cover, the whole cover, and then do the modeling paste. So really there's a few, you know, there's different ways that you can go about this. It's totally up to you. All right, I'm gonna let this dry now. All right, now that that's all nice and dry, you can see some of that pink peeking through. Uh, I'm going to turn it around and just paint the edges here. We don't have to paint everything because it will be covered, but the edges won't be covered, so I have to paint over that. Okay, so now that that's all dry, I can go back to the front of my cover to finish it off with my second color, which is the gold. I have a baby wipe and a rag ready and some of this stuff, which I don't need. So this is just in case if I need it. And here we go. So the idea is to have a really gentle hand and not to have too much color on your brush. So I might have a scrap piece of paper here just so I can sort of wipe my brush on there because I really want a small amount of color so that I don't have huge splashes of, you know, huge bits of color on the cover. And I'm just gently going to start brushing it on very gently. See, that's too much color, so I need even less. So here I feel like I've added too much color, which is where the baby wipe comes in handy, and I'm just going to wipe it off. It's a little bit hard because of the cheesecloth and the color goes in into the grooves. And then I use my rag just to pick it up, and I think that looks better. And now very gently I'm going to go over my whole cover. And I might use different brush strokes so they don't all have to go up and down so that I don't have those streaks. And I'm kind of amending as I go. I can notice some streaks here so I can just go with pretty much almost no color on my brush just to blend everything in nicely. And I think the edges of the cover can have a little bit more color. So I get a little bit of color here and then I pretty much just wipe it off really so that I have a tiny minimum amount on my brush. I don't want to see brush strokes. I'm applying a little bit more on the edges because why not? It looks quite cool. Nice and gold. I can do a little bit more on the edges of the book. Maybe the corners can have extra as well. The idea is to gradually build up that color because I guess you can always keep adding, but it's very, very hard to take away. If you apply too much, it's quite difficult to get rid of it because of all, the, all of those grooves of the cheesecloth. Here we go. I think I'm quite happy with this. To the naked eye, I can't really see any uh, brush strokes, but when I look on screen, I can see sort of here a little bit messy so I can always just keep working at this spot to get rid of those brush strokes that might be visible. I'll just go every which way to blend that in and I can leave it as it is like this with this design because that looks uh, quite good and it's still visible or what I've done with my other journals like with this one for example I painted over the flowers by hand or another way that you can do it 
is if you have something like this, Gilda's uh, Paste Wax. Mine is very old and crumbly and I've tried everything to bring it back to life, but I'm having a real hard time. You can, if you have this, you can just use this instead of the paint and you can just go over with your finger and it gives it a nicer, more even finish. But mine's not working, but I have found if I spray just a little bit of, uh, this is methylated spirits or any type of alcohol, if I just spray it in there, it softens it up a little bit, but not for long. So I might use this, instead of using my gold paint to paint over this, I will use the Gildas paste and just go over everything. Or you can just use paint, or you can leave it as it is, or you can do the modeling paste as the last step and then mix it in with your color so then you straight away have that color on there you don't have to hand paint it but you can see how it's already sort of coming up and i might finish this off screen it doesn't take long and here we go so that was quite quick because uh, the design is raised so it doesn't take a long time this took about five minutes to paint and this is what it looks like so i will let this dry and we will complete the cover because i was only going to do this for the tutorial but i assume you want to know how i finish off the inside and everything so we will continue all right, here we go. So before I go on the inside of my journal, I want to finish off the cover completely. So I'm going to add my book plate. And this is what I'm going to do. I have a little bit of this pretty gold lace fabric that's going to go on there like that. And then I have a little scrap piece of paper, true scrap piece of paper. And I've just sewn around and inked around just for some extra effect that's going to go on there like that. Then I took another scrap piece of paper, you see, and I have the word journal there. And I actually used uh, transfer letters, which is this thing. And this thing is probably 30 years old. That's, that's how it looks and feels. And um, that's what I used, transfer letters. But you can just type the word, whatever word you want. You can just type it up and print it out. So, okay, then I'm going to use this book plate, metal book plate, which is from eBay. And I'm going to secure everything with brads. So these brads are going to go through my cover, which is why I'm doing this step now. Okay, so I first I want to make sure I'm just going to uh, use a tiny little bit of glue to glue this piece of paper on. And the only reason why I'm doing is is just so that it doesn't move around, you know, as I'm placing this on on the journal. Perfect. I'm going to put something underneath because I'll be poking holes and I don't want to damage my desk. So I'm just going to pop that down. And now I need to make sure that I have this where I want it. And now I'm going to use my pokey tool or awl and I'm going to poke those holes. There's many different things that you can do for a book plate. You know, this is just what I'm doing, choosing to do at this time. Now, these brads that I have chosen to use, they're very wide and I really need to make sure that these holes are big enough. So I know this looks scary, all this work on the cover. And then I'm what it seems like to be is I'm ruining it. I'm not ru ruining it, obviously, but it's scary poking these holes in this cover that it took me ages to do well it didn't take ages but all the drying in between you know feels like it took ages i need to make sure those holes are large enough for these humongous brads so that's pretty cool even like look at this that looks cool i mean probably the placement's not that good but if i had four brads in the corners you know pretty cool and here's my book plate and now i'm going to go through here i think that looks okay and then through here There's the first one, and now let's do the second one. I just have to find where that hole is. It's here. Hold it in place. Pop this through. Pretty cool. And this is why we have done this step now. Open these brads. That's going to hold everything in place, and I want to make sure that they're down flat. So this is why we do this step now, because I want to hide these brads. However, in this journal that I was working on last night, you can see that book plate here um i have finished the inside cover and i forgot to put the brads on i mean the the book plate on 
so I actually had to go through my finished inside cover but I just want to show you when mis mistakes happen this is what I'm going to do I'm going to cover that with this piece of paper I might glue that on ink the edges do fun stuff I'm going to make another one of those like this I'm not going to make it I've already made it and then I'm going to pop some tags in there look at that and then just, oh, I just pulled this out last night quickly. I'm not sure if I'm going to use this, but, you know, embellish, embellish that pocket. Maybe do something here. Maybe I can have a little something there. I don't know. We shall see. But all of this to hide those brads. But even if I didn't have those brads there, I would still probably add a pocket or something on the inside. All right, so here we are. We are now doing the inside cover of the journal. The first thing that I do is... Uh, this spine, it's quite a sturdy spine, but if you like squish it down, it can be squished down. I always reinforce my spines. It's not always necessary, but what I do is this is just some cardstock. You know, nothing fancy. You don't need to go and buy this particular thing. Uh, backs of, notebook, uh, of um, notepads and stuff like that have this sort of thicker type of a cardboard, and I uh, use that for reinforcing my spine so I cut it to size on the inside of my spine and as you can see I have painted both ends because then it's not going to be visible and when you're testing for size you know you want to make sure that your cover can close you don't want it too wide you want it even a little bit smaller than the actual width of the cover uh, the spine sorry because then when you close it you know that space kind of fills up if that makes sense and then you have here, you might be able to see this reinforced spine. So this isn't going anywhere. Like this is not going to bend. It's very sturdy spine. All right. I'm going to glue this in there. And then once you bind, bind your journal, you're going to be binding through this and through this. That's another layer of securing it to the book, if that makes sense. And here we go. Perfect. So usually now I want to hide this ugly thing happening over here because look, we need to hide that. Well, in my opinion anyway. So there's a few options again. I like to use fabric because fabric is not going to crack like paper might if you put it on a spine. Then I have cut out two. I'll just show you. I'll move this so you can see. I have cut out two panels that fit my covers exactly. This is just as an extra little effect, the sewing that I did around. It's not, you know, necessary. Now with this fabric, this fabric can go over the top like that. Or you can glue the fabric on and then glue the two panels on. The reason why I did it this way is so once I have the signatures in there, it's just an, another uh, interest on a page you know once the book is made and I have things in there when you open the journal you have pages here and this is just another extra interest that's just the only reason why I, I do it that way before I continue if you want to add a closure like you can see on this journal I have a closure in there I personally have decided not to add closures on these journals but if you wanted to add a closure you would do it before gluing these panels on so you can have uh, one piece of ribbon or whatever you're using running all the way across or you can two, cut two you can glue one here and then glue one here I don't know should I add a closure on this one I won't add a closure I decided not to all right so now what we're doing we have my the spine is in there it's going to reinforce and now all I need to do is glue these two panels onto the covers and just remember, glue sticks and double-sided tapes will not cut it. If you want a book to last, you need to use a proper glue. Double-sided tape and glue sticks I, I view as temporary glues. And that's from personal experience, of course. I have had things fall apart. So I have used this guy, glue stick, just to be like my little helper over here. But I don't expect it to do much in terms of keeping this glued down for centuries to come. I'm joking, not centuries. And here we go. 
make sure that's you know glued down properly and now this one how very exciting all right so that's glued on the book plate is on and my last thing that I want to add is this here so if you glue that straight on like that you know uh, this fabric wants to move when you open and close the book so first thing I do is just apply glue on the spine and another thing I also don't want to have any glue that's visible through the fabric so I don't want any sort of uh, I don't want uh, excess of glue and then for it to go on my fabric and be visible of course you know I do everything to make sure that doesn't happen sometimes it does and it's no big deal but I like to just make sure that it doesn't if I can okay and now pop this on perfect and now what I like to do is apply glue inside the grooves here and I'm going to use my horrendous cheapo brush so I'm going to apply some glue and then I'm going to use this brush to spread it around so that I don't have too much glue on one spot and then you know it's seeping through the fabric it might happen it's no big deal if it does I try to avoid it if I can okay so that glue is in there and now I'm going to just do this push that in and then do the same on the other side I didn't always do it this way but it's these little details that make a finished work special I think the secret is to make something look like it's really difficult to do and you know people think I could never do that but you can do it anyone can do it it just takes patience and depends if you have that patience or not see that okay so now that that's done I'm going to uh, glue these sides down and they don't actually have to be glued down completely like you can see here I have left some breathing room in there it doesn't have to be completely glued down see here I just glued a little bit there so I'm going to do the same here I'll apply some glue now the reason why I'm not me mentioning what glue I use is firstly because this glue is not available in the US I get it here at in Australia at Bunnings you can use any glue you can use this I'll show you I have used this glue in the past it does take longer to dry and the thing is with this glue one thing that I don't like is that it's very runny and it seeps through fabric quite quickly so if I was to use that glue I would really have to make sure that there's really not too much glue otherwise it seeps through, seeps through the fabric and there we go that is the inside cover you can see when you close your journal I didn't center that too well but it doesn't matter that doesn't matter because I will have a signature here so that's fine so now what I would actually do with this because you can see here a little bit of lifting I don't want any of that to lift I'll show you this one see how that it's completely glued down flush that's because after I've done this process this process of gluing things down I lay it under something heavy to make sure that that's glued down so that's what I'm going to do with this one and now this one here my very first journal that prompted this tutorial because you guys asked for it and you can see the differences in what I've done I have a pocket here the spine was done differently because this was already a sturdy spine I didn't have to reinforce it and I just glue I just painted the inside here and it still looks quite neat so the way that you alter your book really depends on what uh, kind of a state the book is in and what the spine looks like and it's good to know all sorts of different things and different ways that you can go about making a journal so I really hope that you enjoyed this video I hope you found it informative and learned new things new ways of doing things and making things let me know in the comments if you would like to see me continue working in this journal because obviously I'm going to make finish this journal I need to make signatures and I thought maybe if you guys want to see uh, how I bind it and how I decorate it and you know, embellish it and all that sort of stuff so 
Let me know if you would like to see that. I can't promise it 100%, but I don't see why not. It would just be one video. So if you're interested, let me know. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.